Come here, you sexy camera. Come here. <laughs> Welcome back to IGN Live. I'm Brian Altano. I'm with Jim uh, and Danny McBride and Jody Hill. Where are you? A vice principal of Eastbound and Down, a billion other things that I've been watching for years. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. No problem. I've Thanks never been us. on a show where I sit behind a table and cameras swoop in. This no, it's like crazy. Right. It's crazy, right? It's really, yeah, it's really, really professional. Some serious ESPN it's kind of stuff. It's like the view. <laughs> it's like the view. It's just like the view. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, me, then? I, don't know. I don't know, but we'll, we'll figure that out. You're Whoopi. Um, <laughs> I want to be Whoopi. <laughs> everyone can be Whoopi. Uh, you guys are doing a show about school. Yes. Again, kind of, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at Eastbound and Down, it's about a, 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 just an awful, failed alcoholic baseball player who we all love. <laughs> who ended up back into school. Why do you guys keep going back to school? I've, I've spent most of my adult life trying to repress my memories from school. You know? you know, I feel like it's, with Eastbound, he's only a teacher for, uh, for basically like five episodes of the show. <laughs> and I think we realized that we liked shooting in a school so much that so we're like, we have to go back there. Mm -hmm. This is honest, but when we shot in the school, they have AC. Yeah, location moves are very simple. Mm -hmm. We're like, man, this is how you do a show. You just, high school. You just drive to the school each morning. And it's like yeah. really nice, you know? They got parking, yep. everything. Right. Parking, yeah. Yeah. built in cafeteria. So, so, so 90% yeah, so. of the creative process relies around the air conditioning system. Yeah, yep. like how, sure. how, what's the AC like? Yeah. There's a reason why we're in here and not in the balcony. Right. That's true. This. That's true. Uh, look, uh, I, the one of the things I, I love about the show is the two main guys, to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they mentally still seem like they're kids in high school, like they never got out of that. That's right. And it's like they've literally and kind of mentally never left school. Am I, am I on to something there? I, I think there? 100%. Like, we grew up on all of those 80s teen comedies, and this is in a way, like, our way of, like, re, like, exploring that territory. But now, like, the people who used to watch those 80s comedies, they're all grown up and old now. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can experience it. So these guys are kind of going through the same sort of social dilemmas that, like, you usually are used to seeing teenagers do, you know? And you're right. We also think it's funny to have a show set in a high school where there's the, you don't even hear the kids' stories, really. Yeah. And it's all about the adults, like, fighting and dating each other and that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> like, well, it's just like... It's exactly the kind of thing, like, kids... Kids who, you know, when you're in school, you'd see you'd see them in the teacher's lounge and they'd be smoking. Your whole image of them would get shattered. Right. So I love that it's like this fly in the wall of just how me like office politics can invade and ruin anything. For sure. How yeah. noble. Yeah. You know? yeah. So how how were you guys in school growing up? Were you terrible, like constantly getting thrown out of classes? Were you quiet? Uh, I, I was kind of a non-factor, really. I was yeah. just kind of like <laughs> like I guess I was I did okay in school, but I wasn't like. Um, I just, I wasn't the top and I wasn't the bottom. I was kind of like, kind of like a checked out. Honestly, it wasn't until film school where I met Danny that I, that I met like people with like a lot of common interests in the music and movies and stuff. So, you know, that's kind of, high school wasn't really my bag. Yeah, I flew under the radar. My sister was bad in school, so she was a smokescreen for my <laughs> terrible behavior. She older like, than you? Mm -hmm. she, she was younger. She would, oh. and she did like way ballsier things than I did, and uh, and so she would be in trouble, and then I could sneak out the back. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't like curse your last name. Yeah. No. 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 Did you have that with some teachers where just like. You're a McBride. <laughs> it cursed her. You. It right. cursed her because they were like, you, you, you know, you're Danny's sister. And then she was like, yeah, I'm Danny's sister. You know, it's like a cigarette in their face. <laughs> so is she kind of an inspiration for some of your? She might be. Yeah, there's something going on the wheels of training about that. Um, so, did, you know, at least from the first episode, um, is it? Did you kind of want to do something, or at least about a characters who might be a little less, for lack of a better expression, acidic than like? the eastbound and down character. You, you know, like this uh, this story where it came from is Jody and I made a, uh, a film together uh, back in 2005 called The Foot Fist Way. Awesome movie. And, and it, went to, uh, it went to Sundance in 2006. And when we got back from Sundance, Jody and I were like, let's, let's work on something else. And we actually came up with this idea then. We got together for like a week and wrote the screenplay. Mm -hmm. And we loved the characters, we liked the setup, but there was something about it being in an hour and a half that just kind of, I don't know, just didn't feel unique enough. Mm -hmm. And so we always came back to the script to try to figure out what we could do to toss it up. And we started looking at it as like, what if we just made it a longer story? Like, what if we took, you know, nine hours to tell the story instead of <laughs> right. an hour and a half? No. And that really kind of gave the show the scope it needed, where you could really spend time with all these different characters. You can establish these other, you know, secondary mm -hmm. characters and, uh, and just go to some really unexpected places. But this story, I think why we like it is that it's, uh, you know, we're, you're following the bad guys in the story. I mean, like, yeah. the, the, the good <laughs> guy right. is the principal that comes in to try to turn things around, and we're following the two people that are trying to, like, 
hinder the person who's the best for the job. Mm -hmm. And it's just an interesting place to sort of start a story. Well, what was it like working with uh, Bill Murray on this on this one? This is, you know, come on, man, that's... It, it, it's awesome. I'd, I'd done it twice before. Yeah. Uh, and so I had flipped out twice before and <laughs> stumbled for words to say. And so it was fun to be on a set and watch everyone else do the same thing. Yeah. It always happens when Bill Murray comes I was, I was stumbling. I was, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I was nervous because he's such a legend. I just didn't want to mess up, honestly. I yeah. just wanted him to like... Was it? Just tough to get him to show up there because I always hear these stories about you know it's an 800 number you got to call only like three people have the number and right. maybe he'll show up we don't know you know he, yeah uh, yeah he wasn't that like he you know when Jody and I yeah it, but. We, we we scouted Charleston South Carolina and uh, and lived on that right? yeah, yeah we, we were we were we were he flying back right, on, the, yeah. on the plane and. We heard someone call my name. I looked around. It was Bill. And so on the flight from Charleston to Atlanta, he just talked to us about why we should shoot in Charleston. So once we decided to shoot there, we came back. We're like, well, he talked us into coming here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he should be in the show. <laughs> uh, I, I really appreciate his setup, by the way, when he comes in. He's just like, I don't care. Just figure it out. Right. Yeah. He, he's he's really real how feature, completely right? inconsequential the entire thing is in reality. But uh, to your character and to Walton Goggins, <laughs> it's the biggest thing in the world. It's the, the, the number one thing worth fighting for. For sure. It, it, it's, uh, I mean, he literally lays out the, sto the, the moral and the story of the whole entire show, which mm -hmm. is... It's not about these guys. It's it's all about the students. But this that's a concept that these guys yeah. uh, grasp with. <laughs> right. You want to hear something kind of lofty? As I'm watching it, I'm thinking, oh, it's like King Lear and his daughters, and yeah. they're all fighting for the king. <laughs> like, well, you know, it is that. No, that is what it is. It is. <laughs> we, we talked about that a lot. There, it's like it's not. <laughs> It wasn't like a direct King Lear reference, but you're not wrong where like we always talked about this as looking at that school as a kingdom. Yeah. And these two dudes are fighting all like like you would see two houses on Game of Thrones fight yeah. or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was part of uh, the thing going the into Iron it. Iron Throne is in the principal's yeah. office. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The show is awesome. Uh, it's on now on HBO. How many how many episodes are in the first season? Uh, well, hey, the, nine. The, yeah, nine. the first season is is a uh, fall term and it's nine episodes, and the second season is spring term and it's the final nine. And uh, you know, that was a different way we set the show up. It is only 18 episodes. It's only 18. Uh, yeah. It's a complete story. And uh, that's why we were so stoked about doing it. And uh, we thought it'd be hard to convince HBO to do that, but they saw our reasoning in that, that it, it's cool to uh, invest in a show and there to be finality to it. You're not yeah. worried yeah, about sure. the quality diminishing. It's a complete story that uh, that is shot and filmed and edited before anyone can kind of weigh in on it. Mm -hmm. And they trust yeah. you guys by now, yeah. right? Yeah. They did, yeah. We didn't have to do a pilot, which was nice. So we were able to just, you know, really just talk about the show and like really like a, a full arc without having to worry about what anybody thought about it or interrupting the creativity, the creativity along the way, which or was really that, nice. That weird thing where you shoot a pilot, and then when you get to the second episode, it's like, why is that guy trying to be more handsome? Why oh. don't he like lose weight between? Yeah. <laughs> why does it look a little different? Uh, it's awesome. Well, yeah. congrats on the new show, guys. I love what you Thank guys you. do. Thank, Thank you so much so for coming. Much. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Vice Principals is on HBO right now. Go watch the first episode. It's really funny. I almost curse. I'm Brian. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is Comic Con. Goodbye. Don't move. Stay where you are. <laughs>